All right, so now that we've seen how to create custom controls, I'm gonna take you through how to create the simple graphs control. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just change the names. And I'm gonna change the match name. BFM for batch frame and simple graphs. And like I mentioned in the other tutorial, you wanna make sure this is something that's unique to you and your control. If it's something that's shared with another control, then when it's installed, it's gonna cause errors. So you wanna make sure that this is something unique and not used by anything else. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is actually create a group. All of the controls, if you remember from earlier, were in their own separate groups. So the user can just pick the section that they wanna work on and focus just on that. Now, the first group is gonna be our global parameters. And the first control inside of that is going to be where you choose the type of graph. And I'm going to use a pop-up control for that. And the three choices are going to be a pie graph, a bar graph, and a ring graph. So now we have our three choices. By default, we do want to have pie graph, so that's what's selected there. And we can change the control name from pop-up to graph type. Now, because the ability to animate this would kind of make a jumpy animation, I actually don't want you to be able to set keyframes on the type of graph. So I'm going to uncheck the stopwatch, and you can see it unchecked down here as well. And now we won't be able to have keyframes on this option, which is what we want. Next, we'll have a checkbox for calculating percentages. And by default, this will be unchecked. And this is also something that I don't want to have any keyframes. Now you can see here that the calculate percentages is at a different level than the graph type. And that's because it's actually come out of the group. Now to place it back in the group, all we have to do is drag it right back in there. And the reason that happened is because at some point I clicked on this area or the simple graphs title and the active group was no longer this global parameters group. So to make it active again, you can just select it or drag something into it as we did. So now we're actually gonna create a group within a group and this is gonna be the look group. And the first thing we're gonna put into here is the random colors checkbox. So this is what's gonna allow us to use random colors rather than the preset colors that are chosen in the sections that we haven't created yet. Random colors. And once again, no keyframes for that. And then we'll have the random seed slider, which will allow us to change the random colors. It'll allow us to choose a new random seed, basically to make After Effects calculate a whole new list of random colors. So random seed. And we'll also uncheck the stopwatch for that. I want the precision for this to be zero. No decimal points, it'll be only whole numbers. And we'll have it be values between Let's say zero the minimum. We'll actually just leave it as 100 for the maximum. So everything else here will leave the same. And let's move on to our next control, which is another group. And this is gonna be the border group. So the border group is gonna be where we set all the options for the border of our graph. And inside this, the first option we're gonna have is just a checkbox that the user can decide whether or not they want to use a border. And by default, that'll be unchecked. And then we're gonna have a few options for the border. The first is gonna be the border width. And we'll give that a default of 50. And everything else, we're actually gonna leave the same. Let's just change the name to border width. And move on to our next control, which is the border color. So we'll create a color control, change the name to border color. And I'm just gonna set this to white. So we'll click the box, drag it over to white, hit okay. We can see the change has been made down there. And we can move on to our next control, which is the border opacity. So that's gonna be another slider. And by default, we want our border to be completely visible. So we'll move this up to 100%. And in this case, because opacity is always gonna be between zero and 100, we're actually gonna set the valid min and max from negative 1,000 to zero, and from 1,000 
to 100. And we'll set the default as 100. All right, so let me just change the name here from slider to border opacity. And then the last option we're going to have here is actually the ability to change the blending mode for the border. So to do this, what I'm going to use is another pop-up control. And I'm just going to give four options for the blending mode. We'll have normal, overlay, screen, and multiply. And we'll leave the default at normal. And so that is all of our border options. Now, just to make this a little bit cleaner, I'm going to close up the border just so we don't have to look at all that. And the next control I'm going to create is the ability to turn on and off a gradient look for our entire control. So we'll create a checkbox. And because the border group was still active, that control has actually been placed inside the border. So to take that out, I'm going to bring this back open. I'm going to choose our checkbox, and I'm just going to drag it out to the bottom. So now this checkbox actually isn't in a group at all. I do want it to be inside the look group. So let me just grab it once again, drag it right up below the border group. So this checkbox is going to be for our gradient. And by default, we'll have that turned off. And I also don't want to have keyframes on this, so I'll uncheck that option. So this is actually all the controls we're going to have in our first global parameters section. So let's close all this up. And let's start our first slice group. So we'll create a new group. And I'm going to call this slice one. And each slice is going to be exactly the same. And they're each going to have two different controls. There's going to be the slice amount, which is a slider. And we are going to give it a minimum of zero, a maximum of 10,000, and then a slider max of 100. Now, for the first four slices, I'm actually going to give their default value, uh, change it from zero to 25. So we'll have the first four slices have a default value of 25%, so that when our pseudo effect is applied to a new layer, you're going to see a basic pie chart right away. Everything else can be left the same. And then the other control we're going to add is the color control. And then I'll just set the default color to a blue and hit OK. So that's the color. Now let me actually edit this name. We're going to call this slice one amount and slice one color. And those are the only two controls that are going to be in each of these slice groups. So now I just need to create nine more. So I'll get that done real quick. All right, so now I've created all the different groups for each slice. So we can close all these up just to give us back our space. And that's really it for creating this control. Now what we need to do is export this code, save the file, and copy it into our presetfx.xml file so we can import it into After Effects and start creating the preset. So let's hit the Generate Code button, and you can see it's generated all of our XML. And I'm going to hit the Save XML Code button. And I'll save this as Simple Graphs Control. So now the XML has been saved, and we are ready to bring it in After Effects. So in the next tutorial, we'll be going through how to import your control into After Effects and start to use it to create that preset.